afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this unique session where you got two virtual econ economists coming together, merging into one. So there will be a holograph, stand still, I know. There will be a holograph, and you will see us slide together. Yeah, it's a cunning deception. So, my name is uh, Eyjolf Gummundsson, known as uh, Dr. AOG, and... Uh, my name is Enoyas, and I don't have a doctorate, but I still am an economist. <laughs> I promise. You should encourage him, encourage him too. Thank you, thank you. Today we will be talking about the economy of the EVE universe. I will be jumping in into the EVE part of it and the universe part of it, but Eno will take the blunt of the work. Thank you, Eno. Bye. <laughs> Once I have given you an introduction. It is about the universe and everything. It is one universe, one war, as we all know, but it is one hell of an economy, one gigantic one. This is the uh, system that we use to describe the basic economy of EVE Online, where you have uh, minerals that are turned into spaceships, traded uh, with, between producers and consumers, a flow system of good services, ISK, floating between people, where there's a sector of uh, faucets and sinks where stuff leaks in, and stuff, stuff leaks out. And that's where our job comes in, the economists, in trying to keep all of that in balance. Luckily, throughout the years, we've been able to keep the balance somewhat under control. The system in itself has been stable, and one of the reasons is that it's a fairly closed loop and it's definitely closed off to the rest of the world. Now, at the EVE universe, we have the old system, we have some spaceships and planets firing on some people with another economy. And now these two will start to merge together, opening up in terms of the goods, services, and ISK going back and forth. It's even going to be to the extent that this system itself is going to be impacted uh, by the services that people provide for dust. So there is an incentive for people to participate. That brings on some challenges it will be the largest integrated game economy on this earth. It will be the largest integrated economy on this earth. That's a challenge in itself. Think of it as in, uh, should we say, after Second World War, people are trying to come up with international trade again, after decades of uh, barriers and and uh, tariffs and people fighting over who should be getting what, we are basically opening up an international sector for the EVE universe. So a change in one world, a design change, the way you guys play the game, will impact the other. One of these economies is actually fairly well established. It has had a decade to form. Actually, it is quite large. The other one is emerging. Hmm. An emerging economy versus developed economies. A small country versus large countries. A country accepting a lot of money from one place going to the other. I think I've heard this before. <laughs> it Actually, if you look at the monetary supply in, e in Iceland in 2006 and 2007, it jumped. 
This is not the prediction of what will happen in between even dust, but it could be. So we have to focus on and make sure that this does not happen. Because we might have warm, warm discussion, a little bit of debate, <laughs> and maybe burning of flags. <laughs> so we have learned. Because if you haven't learned from this, may God help us all. <laughs> I won't say anything else. So, I've said enough for now. These are big challenges, it's a big universe, but Eno is going to give you the details of the dust. Eno, give him a hand. Thank you very much. So, as one might imagine, it's actually quite tricky. It can be quite a headache uh, bringing two economies together and kind of stitching them live. But you can make your life much easier if you actually kind of design towards it instead of uh, building two economies and then just going like, uh, how do we connect this? I think this goes here and that goes there. So, first I'm going to go through the basics of, to give you some context on how the dust economy actually is set up. And then I'll go into details of how it's designed to fit together with Eve. This is pretty much the cycle that we have in dust. And the design principle is that both Eve and dust have to work alone. So, that's basically the design requirement. It's not the principle, it's a requirement. Because we are still operating two commercial services that are separate in that sense from another, but we want to merge them. Uh, because of the commercial requirement, they have to work by themselves. So if the other service for some reason goes out of existence, they have to keep on going. <coughs> but on the other hand, we have, want to make them fit together really well. And this is basically the approach that we've taken. The dust economy is a consumption reward economy. As some of you might know, we don't have no production right now. So it's all about money. ISK goes around, uh, NPC orders seed all the items in dust. Uh, the items basically appear from thin air and players just pay, pay ISK to get them. So ISK is really the key. And this is what basically this cycle shows how ISK flows right now. You buy some stuff from the market, you fit it on, you go into battle, and usually when you go into battle, you have a fight. When you have a fight, stuff gets blown up. When stuff gets blown up, we actually look at that value, and we, based on that, we determine the rewards that you will get from the battle. Of course, this, has, this I'm talking about on a net level. So a battle, the value of a battle uh, it depends on the uh, consumption, but the rewards of individual players within that battle vary based on your contribution. So if you're really good, you'll make more money. And if you're really bad, well, you lose money. Then once you're done with the battle, you go back to the market, you spend some more money, maybe you earn something, you can buy better gear, bring it to battle again, and the value of the battles goes up. You can simplify it it to pretty much this. And this is the really simple cycle of dust right now. There's a nuance to it though. So uh, similar to kind of World of Tanks, uh, in World of Tanks you can play, or you can earn money with the beginner tanks and you'll find that playing with the high level tanks is almost impossible because the repair cost, costs are prohibitively high. This uh, is a similar idea. So as the in, in dust, as the value of the battles creeps up, if you go beyond a certain threshold, we actually start taxing the battles and returning less than you put in. And conversely, if you play on a low level, the battles actually act as uh, 
uh, ASK faucets. Again, if you're a good player, you'll still make more money in the high contribution battles with the high destruction values <coughs> because you'll get a lion's share. But on the other hand, someone, some, someone less fortunate than you will actually pay for you. So now let's go to the bit where we start stitching these together. The first step will be this. Maybe you've heard about this already. Um, will basically allow ISK trans uh, transactions from Eve to Dust. And the way Dust is designed is that it pretty much will be expecting, expecting, we don't know at this point, we're expecting it to become an ISK sync because Eve has a lot of money, a lot of money compared to Dust. Uh, Dust is a de developing economy. Eve is very well established. We're expecting uh, the Eve money to come in, but as long as it's spent on expensive stuff, it will eventually start sinking out. So this is the first step. Just keep it simple. Uh, we don't want to do anything really fancy at first because, well, it's already complicated. Just basically adding to what we have. And in a sense, you can think of the economies, well, we can think of Eve universe economy, not just Eve economy or dust economy anymore, the Eve universe economy, and we're just basically adding one massive feature to that in an economic sense. So now to an interesting bit on how you actually control the balance between the two economies. As you remember, total rewards equals consumption value, roughly. And consumption value derives from market prices. And then market prices we control because of NPC supply. If we adjust the market prices, the whole value of the econ economy either goes up or down. And if this is a bas basically the design tool for us to control the balance between Eve and dust. We don't know what the balance is right now. We haven't, that's why we have to start experimenting, and that's why we have to start learning from this. But this is a tool that we can use to make the economies better balanced. Of course, we don't want to do this too fast, because uh, if you do it too fast, you'll, for example, devalue everyone's savings. If you increase the prices overnight, suddenly your uh, billion ISK will be worth less, because you can't buy as much stuff for it. So it has to be a gradual, gradual, slow process. But raising the price level on an aggregate level allows us to balance the Eve economy against, the dust economy against Eve. If we raise the dust prices, everything becomes more expensive for Eve players. If we lower them, everything becomes less expensive. And we've been, been doing it. So this graph shows the adjustments, basically the average reward level, and the jumps at Inferno 1.3, we were finding that our, our players weren't really happy. They weren't getting enough money. This wasn't a, like a cycle problem, this was a base reward problem. There's also a component in the rewards that's uh, base reward, and that ensures that we always seed money to the system even if everyone gets reset. So the system has to get a start from somewhere. So we bumped that up. Everything was a little bit better, but the players were still kind of unhappy. So we made a run an event that lasted for uh, some weeks. And that's the retribution spike that you can see there. Everyone was really delighted with that. So as a ret like past retribution a little bit, we made it permanent and just raised uh, the reward levels permanently. And uh, spikes over there, dust 514 open, those are events that where we just gave out more ASK. And the drop afterwards is when we reset last time. And th from there, the economy has been slowly growing as people are building more money, building up their uh, wallets. And you can see it's that it's kind of balancing out over there. So we're reaching a level where people uh, are, are consuming, uh, basically hitting the point where they uh, make some money, spend it on prototype stuff, go into matches, die a lot, run out of money, start grinding again. 
and thus this tapers out. It's all about finding the right balance. That's pretty much key here. <coughs> Since there are some problems if we don't find the right balance against Eve. So if we fail to find the right balance uh, and the prices are too low, we end up in a situation where everyone just has everything and you can roll your dust character like and drown him in money and get the best stuff again and again and again. And this makes uh, for pretty uninteresting gameplay because if you think about conquering planets, for example, if everyone has everything and money is in the constraint, first, it's a boring battle. It's going to be really samey and all, everyone will look the same. And second, why would you even do it? There's no point. Then, if the prices are too high, well, this guy will be mad. And dust risks becoming uh, like a uh, rich boys club. So not, it doesn't achieve the goal of everyone getting to interact with dust. That's not very good design. We're designing, getting, integrating uh, two economies, but only a handful of people can participate. And that's not optimal. Or even worse, we risk making interaction with dust a really bad investment. So why would you do that? Why would you spend money on dust if it's going to just go away and you don't get that much for it? So balance. Balance is everything. Eventually, uh, this is, I won't give you any details right now, but eventually we want to get to a place where everyone, like, we're like Eve. We're totally integrated. There's pro production and the NPC prices don't exist. The players determine the prices and the system adjusts by itself. Uh, we want to get there, but this is a gradual process, and uh, we don't want to make any missteps. Some of you might say, why? Why are you being such a dullard? Well, uh, at this point, because we're pretty new, we're uh, launching soon, we don't know enough about the behavior of our players. So if we don't know, we can't really make decisions with good information. And while you could make decisions without good information, uh, it might get pretty interesting. And I'm sure E players won't appreciate if we mess with the economy too much. Ayo. 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 It was planned to hire a Finnish economist with the name Ayo. And an Icelandic one with the name Ayo. This is true. I guess what the Danish one is going to call it. It makes the uh, merging process easier. <laughs> Thank you, Eno. We really need to hammer, hammer this in the challenges that the EVE universe is faced with. Uh, how can we incentivize you guys to trade and have the conquests? There needs to be a comparative advantage advantage to doing all of this, just like in real life. So we need to impl uh, imply some kind of, a, <coughs> of efficiency bonuses, stuff that helps you to earn more in EVE, even though you're not directly trading with dust. But you also need to be able to specialize and st send stuff between the universes. And as uh, Eno was mentioning, the economies need to merge on equal grounds. And that is a big challenge, as Iceland has learned so well. And the interesting part, the Icelandic Central Bank is 100 meters across the road. I wonder if they're here. Because we need a common monetary policy. We need the EVE Monetary Union, or the EMU. <laughs> you got this? Nice. I told Eino that nobody would understand this joke. <laughs> we need to establish the ISK zone. This is the same currency. It's the same universe. So uh, as I described that to you earlier, what happened in Iceland in 2007 is truly something that could happen in this universe. So we have learned our lesson, and we will definitely do better than the EU. For the very simple reason, there's just me and Eino. There are 15 of them that need to make a decision. <laughs> so the way to do it is to go slow. 
and maybe a little bit of taxation. Phase one. Aino mentioned we would open for cash transfers, but there will be a little bit of tax. Maybe 95%. or maybe 25%, but there will be a tax. Phase two, we will start to allow for some type of trade happening, specific items or resources flowing between the two universes. And this, uh, in the, for this to be efficient, to, for this to have a reason to happen, the secondary market uh, need to have been established in dust. So, Without having established a financially stable economy, we cannot start phase number two. When we have started and established a financially stable universe, we can start with phase two. When we have established uh, patterns, needs for people to trade, giving them this comparative advantage, we can go to phase three, which is basically what we all want. Unrestricted cash flows. Well, if I have a tax, I keep the tax, but I'll keep it very low. And unlimited trade. This is the end point. This is where we want to be. But when? <laughs> I can hear the goons are really eager to start manipulating this one as well. <laughs> which is why the timing is so important. Uh, as I mentioned, it can range between 90, 0 and 99%. Phase 2 will kick in when we establish the cash transfers. Phase 3. <laughs> I intend to keep my job for another decade. <laughs> I am in no hurry. Why are we so careful? Well, this one for one reason. <laughs> Two, it might be months, it might be years. Eno, you want to join me? What is your thinking? Is it months? Is it years? Well, it also depends on boring things like feature development calendar. Mm. Maybe uh, years. No, go ahead. Maybe years. And we only have one shot at this. So we want to get it right the first time. I know you all want to know exactly when. I all you want, want to know exactly why and how. Let's take it slow. Let's learn step by step and do this right. Agreed? Agreed. <laughs> Because if we want to have the largest economy available virtually, if we want this to succeed, we all have to work together, understanding the problems step by step. I wonder, Reynolds, should we tell them a secret? No. No. <laughs> You've been telling too many secrets lately, so. No, okay. So don't tell them that Christian told me. You would, you would imagine otherwise, but I'm, I'm the conservative one. Yeah. <laughs> One of our analysts named Christian, he told me that Dutch players had already used 600 trillion ISK. Total ISK on all active accounts and corporations everywhere in EVE today is 650 trillion. <laughs> it's one hell of a sink. Yeah, about that price tuning thing. Yes, about that price tuning thing. It might actually be the other way around. <laughs> might be. Yeah, we would have to have a tax going into Eve. <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about that. Sounds good. Yes. And let's talk about that. So, let's give a really big hand to this really incredible phenom phenomenon. A virtual economy so big that you need two economists to manage it whole team of researchers to analyze it, 
at 500,000 players plus to enjoy it. Let's give it a big hand. <laughs> and because we know that the keynotes are happening at 6 o'clock and it's the last lecture of the day, we're going to stop here with the lecturing with my professorial way of telling you stuff <coughs> and try to get some questions. So please, line up for the questions. Um, Marcus Arcturus from Promethean Industries. How will you know you're being successful? Are you targeting uh, the money supply or an inflation number or some other target that we can watch while you do this? From an EVE universe perspective, uh, we are successful if uh, there's no a uh, big hindrance in the transaction tax and people are participating in the events that are designed to be going between the worlds. So we would be monitoring activity on that front and uh, as well as uh, economic balance of the each universe for itself. So inflation, growth, etc. But first and foremost that there is activity between the games. You know. uh, from the dust side, if we go with a one directional link, the activity would be the measure to look at if we're failing. So if the tax is too high, we won't be seeing anything happening. Uh, if the tax is too low, we might see too much, many things happening and adverse effects in our economic balance in dust. So we, we, we would see, for example, that uh, we're just having constantly too much money and things are getting uninteresting. Next one. All right. All right. So I know that you guys are planning on having a secondary market in which people are making their own things. Uh, currently, as it is, you know, you have people buying, you have people getting their money from, you know, the uh, from the system. It's coming in, and then they're using it to spend on gear. Will there be any issues when you have a secondary market that they're getting their money from the system, and then they're giving it to, let's say, Eve players or all that kind of stuff? Will that have any effects on bringing a lot of money into the economy that wasn't previously there? Because as you were saying earlier, there's 600 trillion ISK spent. Well, what would ha you know? Will that 600 trillion ISK start going right back to Eve, and will that create issues in of itself? That is definitely a problem uh, if our balancing is on the high end. So if we are very, if Let's say, as a simple example, if you have a dust character, you jump in as a newbie and you're making 10 million in 10 minutes, then it's definitely a problem. And in that case, we would get people playing dust to fund their, fund their EVE activities, which is not really, like, it doesn't make any sense for guys on the ground to be uh, destroying so much value, getting so much money. And that, we've uh, basically talked about the, uh, the approach to balancing from multiple perspectives. And one has been just uh, like a production cost pr perspective. So assigning production costs to dust items and trying to balance with that. So, but yeah, it's really problematic if the balance is tipping that way. And that would mean that we would actually have to bring it back down. Right. Secondary market is, in my opinion, a bit outside of that because it wouldn't interfere with the cycle dynamic per se. Yeah, but it would increase the money supply a lot, wouldn't it? You know, it would increase a lot. It no, uh, it would not increase the actual money in the system. It would just increase the velocity, and as such, could cause inflation. Yes, mm -hmm. but it would not really be the secondary market fault. It, it will actually help levi le alleviate the problem because we would understand the pricing much better. We understand what people are buying and so on. But to follow up on your on your comment, uh, yes, it would definitely be a problem if uh, money would start to sink in large quantities from dust into EVE because, as you guys know from my previous lectures, we rather need sinks than faucets, and another faucet would be a problem. This would call for a meeting in the EMU where we would sit down and decide what the tax should be in the short term, and then we would uh, fix the problem for the medium and long term. Uh, thank you, and also with the decade comment, you'll fit right into CCP. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I am a waffle thief. I was just wanting to ask, since you guys do have a responsible plan for how to deal with the economies, will you be holding lectures or conferences for the world's real monetary policy makers to teach them how to do it properly?
Well, when there is uh, demand, there should be supply. There is definitely a supply. Is there a demand? <laughs> if you scream loud enough, they will hear you from the other, uh, on the other, other side of the street. So perhaps, but good question. Eno? I think we're quite busy balancing these economies and dealing with this, so I don't know if there's even supply. True, true, very good. Good point. See, that's why you hired him. He's smart. Uh, hey, do you envision that you can make uh, an EVE player and a Dust uh, 514 player uh, equal in terms of like uh, consumer power, uh, income? What do you mean? They're mercenaries. <laughs> They're supposed to be used. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but is, I mean, is that the... Is that the plan? Are you, I mean, will a Dust player always make less ISK than an EVE player? Or, or are you aiming for some sort of uh, equality? There is a funny, uh, funny answer to that question, and there is a serious one. <laughs> Which I'd like both. <laughs> <laughs> Start with the funny one. Start with the funny one. Well, uh, I'm Amar. So, <laughs> of course, they're always going to make less. <laughs> The more serious one is a quite interesting economic, economic phenomenon from a real life <laughs> perspective. Because you guys are spending your time playing games. And what is the worth of your time while spending it in a game? Is the enjoyment the same if you're in Eve or in Dust? Or is, is it a faster pace? Is it more enjoyable or is it equal? This is an unanswered theoretical, theoretical question, which is I would very much, I'm going to try to look into once all of this starts to move out. So, 9.5 for the question. Yeah. But remember, thank, thank you. Like an they eight, are. Like an 8 for the answer. Remember, they are mercenaries. Sorry, Eno, but they are mercenaries. Uh, just to tack on to that, I think it's always suboptimal if we decide what you should earn. So, we should make an effort to put those decisions into your hands rather than control them ourselves. Excellent. Uh, hi, I'm Megaram from Shiva and 401k. Uh, what do you think that are, are the phenomenons or mechanics in our economy that are stopping from player-backed currencies from em emerging? Are we, really? Well, uh, usually player-backed currencies emerge if the dominant currency isn't performing adequately, so that there's an actual need to get a new currency. Uh, there's a couple of examples, in, uh, like Hubbo. They didn't actually have a currency, so players traded with shares. And they, then that wasn't a very good currency because they were stacking the shares in their apartments and they were full of shares. <laughs> so... Um, in that sense, I guess there would be a compelling need for a player-backed currency, and if such a need arises, then why not? But uh, who would govern the currency, I think, uh, is a good question then. Yeah, Goons, and I, would, I would actually challenge, and, uh, challenge <laughs> and, and, and say that in many ways people have established certain items as mean of exchange. There, you, you can use that instead of ISK when you're, when you're exchanging. And that is an emerging currency. Yes, so sense. those are emerging currencies, really. Uh, I would love personally, and remember, this is a dream of mine. This is not nothing that is on any development roadmap. It's just something that would be great to see. Is a different currency system that allows for uh, a fractional reserves compared to the ISK, which, which is a, it's not a fixed reserve, but it uh, doesn't allow banks and so on to issue currency. So if races would be able to issue currencies, it would be interesting to see how the two systems would evolve. We have another decade, so let's wait and see what happens. But Next one. Um, hi. I would like to know how much knowledge of your real-time economics can it be compared to EVE economy, or did you need new, I don't know, formulas or new theories to build uh, the, the virtual economy in there. Let me emphasize that the EVE economy is not built by an economist. It is actually built by a guy who has a degree in the chaotic physics. <laughs> <laughs> and he did a beautiful job, a beautiful job, because it has the fundamentals. There's nothing compl complex about it. 
it has the fundamentals of exchange that are needed. In order to understand it, to come up with recommendation of balancing of resources, not the economy itself, because the markets and so on, they are intact, but the balancing of the resources, you need to understand how the system works, and that's where the economist like me comes in. And I use often basic, sometimes advanced economic methods in order to understand that. So I did not have to learn any economic theory. I had to brush up on many different disciplines within economics while joining uh, CCP, because as an, as an example, monetary economics are very, very important uh, for uh, our computer game. So if you think about it in deep details, go deep into the universe, what will you find? You will find mostly people. These people, as I am seeing here, you are all real. And you are making real decisions. They hurt you when you make this decision that they're wrong. And you get rich at the right. They create emotions. So there is fundamentally no difference between the decisions that you make for Eve as you do in real life. Not from a theoretical standpoint. So the economies of Eve and dust are not really virtual. They are actually real with any way you look at it from an economic theory. Thank you. Hello, um, I have a question, or more like, I probably didn't understand it completely, but um, the biggest problem, or one of the bigger problems here is uh, probably the inflation. And I just wanna know, is the tax that it's gonna be during the transfer from uh, Eve to dust or whatever, gonna be the only thing that's really gonna control the like worth of ISK? Do you want to start, Eno, from a dust perspective? I mean, because you guys are controlling the MPC market. So your question is about the worth of ISK and if the tax is the only thing controlling it. Uh, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so the basically the, what I showed you earlier about the pricing, uh, price level in dust, that's the <coughs> other control. The tax is the other one. And then ultimately the price level in dust will decide a lot of, like, help e-players decide if it's worthwhile funding dust operations. So if dust operations become more expensive, it usually becomes less, uh, or less, less advantageous for e-players to actually participate, and vice versa. Dust stuff is uh, less expensive, then it's better. And one thing we haven't actually talked about here, because it was kind of uh, extra and it's upcoming, is planetary uh, conquest. And that's kind of outside of this cycle, and that balancing is also outside of this cycle. So what I mean is equipment and items and tanks could be really cheap, but the planetary conquest rewards could be really high, and that would make it, make it really attractive for EU players to get in on it. But on the other hand, the keeping the planetary conquest rewards equal, if we raise the prices of items, then war just becomes really, really, really expensive. And it might not make any sense anymore to actually get involved. So that's basically the other adjustment. Tax is basically just a really easy way for us to control the floodgates. So we can put it to a percentage, then see what happens. If everything's fine, then make a change. Then something blows up, we go back and then gradually we do away with it un until we have a balance. But it's basically, in my view at least, it's just to get rid of the turmoil. All like little fluctuations are always good because those create some intrigue and activity and interest and good people start gambling and the people start like uh, speculating. But uh, too much turmoil is not good because it might just break the whole system. So we're just trying to eliminate too much volatility with the tax at this point. And maybe to emphasize that is a good question because you need to understand one thing, that his job is much harder than mine. I have a fully fledged economy that's just functioning on its own and we monitor and we make recommendations. But Eino has actually have to think about what prices to set. Because now and for the next few months, which we cannot tell you exactly how far, for how long, that is only players buying from NPCs. So he is the NPC. And that's why I'm so eager to get rid of that. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly, because we want that to be a player-driven system as well. Yeah. Okay, thank Good you. Good question. Um, right now, it's the case that um, it doesn't really matter where you are in dust. You can always buy everything from everywhere. Um, but when the market is opened up between EVE and dust, it should also mean that the goods should be somewhere in EVE. And that might also mean that the dust players have to be somewhere in EVE. And it also has to mean that they should be destroyed, killed off, or whatever somewhere in EVE to um, keep the economic balance intact. Because otherwise, you'd have even more indestructible goods in EVE, which is just not a good thing. And how are you planning to introduce that? Uh, gradually. <laughs> Uh, but it's a, it's a ter really uh, good point because that is definitely the what is lacking right now. We don't have a sense of inventory location in dust. So there is no, basically, uh, inventory just magically moves with you. And we definitely want to get away from that to make, put it in the hands of players. As you know, because you play dust with a controller and it's on a PS3, we basically thought that it was that you building a UI to manage your inventories would make it too complex to begin with. So we're trying to find a good way to make it work. And once we get there, then we can start implementing it. But it's definitely somewhere, a place where we want to be in the future. We don't just have a good plan of when that will happen yet. But we're working towards it. Next one, please. Hi. Uh, once a goon swarm has found a bug and run the numbers, how are you going to prevent a failed cascade in two economies at the same time? All yours. <laughs> Next. <laughs> hey, this is Celine from JLabs. Um, I'm not that much of a player right now. Yeah, um, please talk a little bit more into the mic. I know it's a long, long way down there, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm, not ha I'm not having the time right now to follow all the dev blogs, but maybe this issue is addressed. How do you deal exactly with uh, the increasing inflation? Besides, I noticed you nerfed some bounty systems, I guess. And You're talking about EVE only. Yeah, EVE. Yeah, yeah. And maybe, uh, do you plan to diversify the sources for resources so m more people get their hands on rare resources and then prices drop and everything so the information, uh, inflation might slow down? Do you have any plans for that direction, maybe? I would like to refer all EVE questions for tomorrow's lecture at 11. Yeah. I will have a lecture then on EVE. I will be addressing that inflation qu question p uh, in particular. So. Please come again tomorrow with that question after you've seen that lecture. Yeah. And then let's have a debate about the inflation. You will be surprised. Oh, OK. Thanks. Hi, my name is Scott. I've got a question on minerals. Once you create one economy with double the size of EVE, will the production still come out of basic minerals like they do in EVE now? That will have to, sounds like the mining will have to double to support the dust economy as well as the EVE economy. Is that correct? <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a great point as well. But uh, I had it hidden in the slide somewhere. Uh, we haven't made those decisions yet regarding production because it requires quite a bit of deliberation and just looking at the system and analysis. We don't want to do something like that where we are ah, just use this one. Yeah. OK, let's have a beer. <laughs> so uh, we have to be quite careful when we're picking. It might be a new thing. It might be a new mineral that exists to make it easier. It might not. Well, we're still in the process of figuring it. Thank you. Hi. Um, <clears throat> you gave uh, the real-world example of Iceland, and you talked about international trade between uh, is a sense of what you're doing here. And it occurred to me that you can get a gigantic economy, one universe, one war, without one currency, and I'm just wondering whether it was a design goal that both systems had to use ISK from the beginning, or if you considered, I mean, you're doing a lot of exchange rate setting with prices a little bit like that. I'm just wondering if you considered using separate currencies and then having an exchange rate that would sort of float as, you know, if dust players are more productive, yep, right, yep, people yep, want yep. that currency. We had a, a lot of internal debate about that one, yes. And uh, remember, there are two currencies, there's AUR and ISK, and AUR is the uh, other major currency in dust. 
I do believe it still exists, then, Eve. Yes. And uh, can be found somewhere under some rusty beds. But uh, in general, uh, we had that discussion. Should it be an ex foreign exchange market? Or should it be one universe with one currency? And given the fact how it has served us well for EVE to have ISK for everyone, we thought that it would be better to have it from the uh, game mechanics, just to have the uh, actual uh, currency floating, but have the difference in the virtual uh, or the microtransaction currency. Yes. And since those items, am I correct, uh, those items will be going on the secondary market, the other item, at the same time yes. as the yes. ISK items? Yeah. Yeah. At that point in time, you will actually establish yeah. that currency rate. Right. Okay. So you can start training in, in, in foreign currency <laughs> options and, and see what you can do with that. <laughs> Last question. Perfect ah. timing. Thank you. Uh, right now, uh, clones for dust players medically appear when you die. Uh, will there some time that you will be needed to buy them and transport them around for, for you to use them? I did not quite get it. Did you get, get Can it? you repeat the question, please? Uh, the, the clone in dust, yep. it uh, magically appear where you are. You don't, uh, you don't buy them or anything. Uh, will you be needed to buy them, put them in a station or in a system for you to be able to use them later in the war? Yeah, uh, that's you, actually an uh, excellent point. That's in the instant battles, so basically in the... Uh, pick up battles where you just jump into the game and you get match made somewhere. In those battles, the fiction is the NPC corporations just deal with the logistics. You don't have to care about that. They have lo clones uh, where you're going to deploy and that you'll just clone in. But for Planetary Conquest, the new feature that we have going live with the next build, you will actually have to transport your own clones. So you won't be able to just jump somewhere. You will have to transport your clones there, and there's uh, mechanics like attrition rate if you're trying to go too far away. There's a, I believe there's another lecture regarding that for those who are interested. So check that out. Thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you guys all for these uh, great questions. It's been really great. good to be here. And remember... Oh, thank you. Keynote starts at 6 o'clock in the main auditorium. And Eno, welcome Eno again. Buy him a beer. <laughs> <laughs>